And they had a bunch of engage in the bot lane from Sivir and Nautilus as well. So there's a lot of things that you'd have to be really concerned about as you get into picks and bans. Right now, Westor loses his LeBlanc, and Easy Hoon loses Cassiopeia. But yeah. Westor is not a big LeBlanc player. No. So why on earth do you ban that away? I know, again, you want to target Westor here. You want to remove these assassins. We have to remember Easy Hoon. He plays the slow scaling mages a lot more than Faker. So you have that option of getting a few kills on him, and that snowballs into the bottom lane. Because what Westor does in LMS is he gets a few kills, and yeah. then he roams to the bottom lane and helps out Anne. This is to purely target him out. The first ban is just completely wasted. Yeah, that's very strange. I want to see what that third ban actually is. And I'm also honestly surprised at this Nunu ban so far. Banky hasn't pick. done a great job. But no, I understand the Rek'Sai first pick, but sort of the early aggression of what we've seen Bangi do as a positive for SKT. I think SKT does need a strong early jungler. Nunu doesn't do a whole lot of that for E6, I feel like. It is a great dragon killer. Obviously, one of the great things SKT does. Tia Fan comes through. There's the Rek'Sai first pick, as you said, Deficio. I really feel like SK Telecom is, is making mistakes in this pick and ban phase. I don't mind the twisted fate. It's just the very first ban here. That should have been the Rex sign instead. You could see what HQ were trying to do with banning out Nunu. And also by banning Alistar, they were predicting the Urgot Alistar combo to come in as a response from SK Telecom. And they obviously want to have a lane that's not too tanky for them to go and tower dive it. Because we have seen Westor and AHQ tower dive again and again and again. Removing Alistar is smart to Absolutely remove that agree. combo. The next question we have to ask is what will Marum be playing? He played that knock earlier in the day and yesterday. A fantastic effect with the Urgot locked in. SK Telecom had the pick of top laners available. And they opted into not knowing the likes of Maokai, the likes of Rumble, all these other top lane priorities were available. But that's the big comfort pick for Marin overall. We've got a couple more lock ins from AHQ, and you can see they're still trying to make the bot lane ganks happen, right? TP, Maokai, practically brainless. Even I could do it properly. Sivir down to the bot lane as well. Great for making that happen. But because AHQ spends all their time ganking bottom lane, Marin gets to be on a lane bully top laner he's very comfortable with. Still a good TP threat, but a great 1v1 champion. You don't expect it to be disturbed, yeah. and you're going to see turret pressure from SKT 1v1. And also a champion where you have different kind of builds you can go for. If you want to be a bit of a split pusher, we have seen Frozen Mallet into like a Hecarim matchup a few times. We know Hexdrinker is very common if you're against something like an AP mage that can split push against you later on. So with now you have different kind of builds you can go for to try and counter what Westor will do. Now obviously most of these split pushing champions are gone here. And because it's already Maokai Severe being locked in from AHQ, then you can't really run, uh, run the Zed because you have too much physical damage. So it has to be an AP mid laner. Karthus would be my normal guess for Westor and also for let's just camp that bottom lane. We have the Karthus ulti, we have our jungler, we have so many ways of killing the bottom lane of SK Telecom. I actually don't like Karthus a lot here. You're right that he might go for it because he needs AP damage. The Nautilus helps a little bit, but Karthus needs a lot of lockdown, I feel, to make sure that the, the defile damage actually matters here. If you can't keep him stunned, Karthus dies too fast, yeah. SKT gets out. And that's where Wesso has his uh, Rylai's build to help him out in case they don't have a lot of CC. It does two things for him. First of all, you can not really kite backwards, or you can kite backwards with it, and you can cut out for your AD carry, or you can use it obviously to close the gap onto SK Telecom. But we're going to have to see the next if he has all AP choices. The next question is, what is Easy been considering over in SK Telecom? We know it officially Azir, yeah. has been the alternate, but is he going to go on the de facto? He was solo killing GE Tigers in the LCK finals, something that we, we not traditionally associate with Easy Hoon. We'll see what he decides to lock in. Last few seconds for Westor. Felt he needed AP damage. He's gone above that and a true damage mid laner. Not something that is naturally associated with Westor. We have seen him play it a few, few times. Generally, when he needed a blind pick, because Cho'Gath is so safe in their lane, he doesn't really have a whole lot of bad matchups yeah. in the mid lane. But it's also a champion that's so hard to carry on, because in order for you to start effectively, like let's say, split pushing, you're too immobile. That's never really going to happen for you. You're too easy to, to catch out in one of these side lanes here, and it's very hard for you to land your combo properly to kill a target on its own. So this is more of a Westor sticks with the team, comp, not we're going to 1-3-1 one, one and try and simply put pressure on every single lane at once. Yeah, I mean, thankfully they still have the Rek'Sai and a Teleport top laner to maybe get some of these waves pushed out. AHQ still does have the ability to play the map somewhat. And either way, this team is still focused on the bot lane going well, so Westor being part of the team, not exactly a big problem anyway. Talk about the Azir, I think yeah. that is the likely lock in here for SK Telecom T1. And again, I go back to the fact that you talk about the LeBlanc ban not meaning much, the Nunu ban I think not either. Greg is still very happy for Bengi, he's going to have that early pressure to turn some ganks around. Yeah, even though it's not a champion with seen him play too often. I'm sure he's been practicing in his scrims. I mean, you're not a professional jungler and only playing Rek'Sai and Nunu. That's <laughs> a little bit too simple for someone like Bengi. But if you do look at this Azir pick from SK Telecom, what I like against Cho'Gath mid is things that can kite him. 
and having that ulti from Anasir to knock him back and basically prevent him from ever getting onto target and one shotting them makes it so hard for Westor in team fights to get close enough. And then who is he gonna ulti outside of their Zir? Because everyone else is gonna be extremely tanky, they're gonna stack some HP, we're gonna have shields coming in. There's not a whole lot of one-shot potential for Westor unless he gets a great, great start in this mid lane. That could be the way for HQ though. Shut down mid lane, then start roaming bottom lane. If there was any other team that was looking to go aggressive early, AHQ, one of the top contenders here at the Mid-Season Invitational. They've got the tools, they've got an early game jungler. They do have a lot of CC in each of their lanes. Yeah. I think a lot of pressure on Mountain to get off to a good start. And uh, starting the League of Legends fans young are the audience here in Of course, Tallahassee. of course, of course. I mean, you know, think babies don't need an income to start playing League of Legends. It's thankfully free. So, you know, who better to, to start playing League of Legends? Look how cute Nar is. I mean, come Absolutely. on. All, all babies love Nar. Annie's around. She's even got a teddy bear. So it's like an easy right, transition. Let's, let's dial this back. You guys at home, it is the last regularly scheduled game. There are implications for tiebreakers and standings at LOL Esports. Hit us up. Hashtag AHQ win or hashtag SKT win. Very briefly, as the analyst desk were alluding to, it is AHQ fighting for the right to challenge first place SK Telecom T1 and force more games if they can pick up a win on the Rift. So here we go, SK Telecom T1, a win here puts them in first place. They'll face Fnatic first of all, and AHQ will have to do battle with Edward Gaming, or we get two more matches. If there is a tiebreaker, EDG has like a massively faster average game time. They'd have a good seed in that, but we'll get to that if it even happens. But isn't it just amazing that AHQ, we're even talking about the fact they can beat SK Telecom and then tie for this first place. It really shows how good they are and how good LMS as a region has become. The fact that they're up there with the best teams in the world for, from AHQ side, definitely on the same level as the likes of Fnatic and, and Team Solomit from what we have seen in this tournament. That's just great to see that we no longer have to talk about this underdog when it comes to Let's LMS. Let's be fair, at this tournament, they are performing better than Fnatic yes. and Team Solo Mid. AHQ definitely come into the game with a great uh, mindset and attitude. Let's touch on the early game. SKT, very deep, but they didn't get the lane ward. But they do have a couple members of AHQ surrounding them. So the lane ward has been very predictable, and a lot of teams know how to avoid it. You can see the bottom lane from HQ, how they're sitting at the tier one tower. That's to avoid that potential lane mode coming in, so you don't see them walking from base and spotting them. That's also why SKT is changing it up a little bit. You're, war you're warding on the camps, Raptor camp, Crooks. Yeah. Those two are warded, that's how you spot them. And it's smart as well, SKT, you only get five trigger wards to start out, so not even showing your opponents where they got put down can help them you know, not make the right choice. AHQ don't necessarily know they're getting spotted going through all these brushes. We'll see how they got. No, I don't know which those mid lane. Start. Oh man! Tire level one is gone. Jeez. But we are seeing actually some different things going on. Ziv is actually going uh, to take down the Wolves by himself. We're not seeing him help the mid lane at the start. It's not that weird Raptor start. It's a full clear for Ziv, which will give him a small lead against Marin in the 1v1. Yeah, trying to obviously rush that. He knows it's going to be a tricky matchup into the Nar. There's not really any kill pressure for Maokai in this sense that he's going to get pushed down by Marin early on. We have to see Marin tends to overextend quite a lot. If Mountain, because he's starting on the bottom side, I think this is what he's trying to scout. He does red buff, then he does the, the Raptor Cam and does blue. Has the, uh, the double buff at 3 minute 20 seconds around that time. And then he goes for the first gang on Marin, where Maokai can lock him down. And if Marin does not early ward, which is something, again, he often forgets, you can get that first buff. Wow, a lot of pressure then on Marin's shoulders to avoid that first early gank in a minute to two minutes time. Uh, Mountain's too low. Return to lane with four potions and a mana pot, so looking to play the extended lane phase. But he can always try for the mid lane as well. Easy Hoon already pushed under the turret. Westor has landed so far 100% of his ruptures. We've seen mid lane pressure against SKT work before, but Westor now out of mana cannot make that gank happen. Had to call it 100% freak, and then he misses it. Cast a curse. Dude. Definitely your fault. So You're welcome, SKT of, fans. Instead of going for Marin top, we see very early focus on the bottom side for Mountain A. We know this is the strategy often from HQ, Cam for Ann. He's taking a very different route. Over the wall, he's going in. Well, it's going to be looking for the knockup. Found Bang gets him up. He's got the red buff ticking. That's a flash forward. But Wolf is going to be able to flay them backwards. Wolf continues to chase. Into the tower. Oh! Yes, sentence. Mountain, we got him. Flash away. And first blood to SKT Wolf. And look at the player. Top lane first. And it's going to be Zim now getting jumped on. He does have flash pops that gets away from the house. But SKT getting the better of both ganks. Well, look at Wolf here. He flashed into the tower. Then he, he hooked onto Mountain. So he pulled him into the tower range ends up getting the kill. That was a very early gank from a Rex already down to around was 60% HP when he came in for this because he did the long, really did Crooks, Red and Raptor to drop very low. Bengi also knowing 
That mountain was on the bottom side and died, so now it has a free blue buff for him. Great, great start for SK Telecom. Fantastic outplay indeed. Wolf returns to lane with the help of Bank. Does land another death sentence onto Albus. No tower aggro yet. Oh. The dredge line does not connect with the wall. And Albus is just taking Acid Hunter and auto attacks from Bang in the backside. Great lane control from SKT. There are still some potions on AHQ and First Blood or not. SKT burned all their summoners in the escape and lost a lot of health from the dive. Brown two in the bottom lane. Close, exactly, and Rek'Sai's coming in for more. And we'll see if he can make it work. Gave up a buff last time trying to make this happen, and Minion Wave pushing backwards. He's hanging out in the tri-bush, Deficio. So there's only a flash for Anne now. Both Mountain and Elvis used it on the first gank, and he's setting up for a tower like This is so risky, especially now that Bengi's also on the bottom side to come oh. down for a potential counter gank. But Bengi's going over towards the mid lane. The Rift's going to block the river this pass. Is so scary. If they push into the turret, they're going to try anyway. Here they go. Knock up on the Bang. There's the chilling spike. Bang's in trouble. AHQ get one on the board, and it lands in Anne's hands. So he managed to get the gang off before SK Telecom went back to the tower. That's why it worked for him, but he was waiting in that bush for quite a while. Bengi, meanwhile, has just been farming the jungle. He's been farming Mountain's jungle, to be fair. Meanwhile, yeah. because all these ganks happen in the bottom lane, Isun has just been pushing this mid lane over and over. He knows Bengi is around, and Mountain has no way of being near. And Westor is down six minions so far and a little bit of turret pressure overall. But we've seen Westor almost every single game gets behind early on in the lane, then something cool happens later. Once again, Marin and Ziv in a battle, but as a flashless Maokai, Ziv has to be careful here. Yeah, keep an eye on all those potions. Ziv has chugged through all of them. I believe he's just got that single one left. Marin playing very aggressive in the lane, and obviously Ziv without flash. It's going to be okay for Ziv, though. His TP's up in about a minute. He can make a play soon. Albus now looking to make the roam play mid. Easy Hoon has flash, though. Oh, oh it's interrupted! He pulls Easy Hoon backwards. Here comes Bengi for the counter gank. It's a 3v2. Easy Hoon forced to flash. Now Bengi's the one that's in trouble. He flashes in reply. Wolf, does he want the death sentence? I think he does. Going to throw the wind up, and let's see if it connects. Decides to hold on to it, in fact. And SKT forced to burn flashes. Marin, though, about to hit level 6. Ziv's got to be real careful how soon can Mountain get up there. But so much damage taken by the minions means Meganar just kind of get angry for no reason. <laughs> so let's slow this down a second. Yeah. One to one in kills, 800 gold ahead. Is Not sure it's time to slow oh. down. Oh. See ya! That was easy. <laughs> that was a little too easy for Westall. The flash feast and dinner is served. We looked up bottom lane. Anne and Albus now in retreat. Wolf and Bang get the teleport in from Marin. The flay into auto attack secures the kill, and Marin's looking for blood. He's going to get an assist on the second one, and SKT with an easy turnaround. And Ziv didn't even choose to teleport there. Too low on mana to do much of anything. Great play there by SKT. Absolutely wonderful there. One of the big trends we've seen in this tournament is teams are so good at abusing summoner spell list lanes. We saw a great gank from AHQ down the bot lane before. The early gank on Easy Hoon. They got a repeat visit from Westor himself, and now this is the same thing. Yeah, let's see. First, on to Bang It. That's obviously the 2v2 trade with the Urgard and the Thresh. Albus is taking a lot of damage. Then, nice hook from Wolf. He's been on fire already in this game. TP coming in. A weird thing is, despite Bang dying to that early gank, it's almost in his favor as an Urgot, because when you trade a lot early on and you two AD carries go back to base, Urgot is an AD carry who has very, very cheap items he needs in the start to get quick and small power spikes. Like the tier means he can spam more. Brutalize is a fairly cheap compared to a BF sword in order to get some more damage and also he can stack these long swords. Other AD carries like Sivir, they want to get that BF sword on first back, but they're not able to if they have to fight so much early. So it's almost been in favor of Bang, and now, Talking about fights, we might not be done yet. Wow, well, looks like Mountain was able to get away. Not enough support for SKT. A lot of action in the early stages of this game, but it is hurting AHQ's farming. Top lane behind, jungle behind. Oh, mid and 80 carry, not sitting even. Ziv gets Ooh. against the wall in a big knot. Marin and Ziv continue trading back and forth in one of those very exciting tank battles where they swing at one another for years. But it looks like Mountain wants to once again return to bottom lane. Same route for him. He just tunneled over the wall here. He plays it with Destin Teleport. With the flash, they're all up. No ult for Bang, though. Will this be enough with the damage? Because Zip comes in. No TP at all for Morin. On pulls the aggro first, which means it's going to be a kill, but the save is going to be late to the refight. And Zip's going to be real careful. Flash the way. One hit from dead. Two kills picked up very cleanly. AHQ juggling aggro right. Bang is nearby, though. Well, we'll see if he can get anything. Does have explosive cast, but everyone from AHQ has peeled and back away. AHQ go low. 
but get themselves two kills on the board and set their sights maybe for a dragon. Realize it's too risky. Smite and Feast are both down. Westor got a Feast onto the Spell Crab. Low too. Exactly. So they're not, it's not worth the risk they want to get. Is it back into lane, not get them too far behind Marin? A uh, slower but safe approach. I think it's the right choice for AHQ. And look at what AHQ is doing here. They knew the teleport was down for Marin because he used it back down in that 2v2 fight. So that dive was fairly safe, honestly, being four members versus two only. And also had some decent control around at least the mid lane to spot E soon. So he wasn't roaming down as well. So they could go for another dive. And they just keep putting so much focus on trying to shut down Bang and Wolf. Uh, we're about to hit the 10 minute mark and the action is continuing. Look at the minimap. There is everybody looking to set themselves up for a mid lane party. AHQ, arguably with a team that needed to get some sort of lead early, has yet to accrue any control on this match. But as everyone predicted, the parties are in the bottom lane. And now we can start seeing some trademark warding from SK Telecom. If you look at the minimap around the Dragon, they always invest in pink wards in the river and then fairly defensive around the mid lane. So first of all, secure, they can always sit and farm, but also to open up different routes for Bengi to start either invading into enemy jungle or going down to certain lanes to gank them. This is very important that HQ try and shut it down because they have the Rek'Sai choke up combo. That 2v2 lane or 2v2 skirmish is so scary. They have to take back control of this river here. They are spotted now. SKT is coming in to stop the Dragon. Yeah, absolutely massive risk. Albus had to flash away or swap from Bang would have meant him dead. So SKT gets the dragon. They didn't clear the wards away properly, AHQ. So the primary way SKT yeah. wins their games, these dragons, first one comes in at 10 minutes. And right there is just why you need to control the bottom side river. If you're playing against SK Telecoms, they will spot you trying to sneak dragons. They know they can safely move down from mid lane to stop you as well because there's no wards to see them. So it's just too easy for them to move around and then punish you if you make a mistake in that river. Well, we did see Mountain with that very aggressive play. Taking a look around maps for the time being. Minion's actually going to secure the bottom lane tower in favor of AHQ thanks to that dive from very early on. Elvis and Ant may be feeling confident that there's no vision here for SKT. Nah, that's a bit it's tricky in the bot lane. Yeah, it looks like SKT not willing to push through to the fog of war, but top lane is going to be an option. Marin, half health, no rage, does have flash. Well, let's see if he can get away. Mountain looking for the knockup. He's going to interrupt the hop. Guys have that red buff ticking away. Mara's in trouble. He chomps down, but it's not enough. Mountain looking for more. The minions will block any prey seekers as Bengi moves his way up top for, for support. With Wolf coming in to help, we might see another fight. Look for the death sentence. The lantern goes in, not even needed. Mountain's trying to get away. And he's gonna have to flash over the wall, but thankfully it's already, <laughs> the flash is gone for the rest of SKT. No chase available. HU gets away off of a very aggressive jungle path. Very strange miscommunication here from them. You saw how the lantern was there for Bengi to take, but he flashed a wall instead. So kind of wasted his summoner. He's trying to body slam flash to knock him around and miss Most it. Most likely, yeah, but then the lantern was just a bit wasted. Oh, yeah. Sapphire went the wrong way. Is he still going to go in? Zip and Albus now. A lot of people here. He has the AD carry. Well on the hunt. They've locked Marin down there. And once again pulls Tower Dagger. Dredge line pulls Pinky backwards. Westall looks to feast. And that gets two more kills for AHQ. But at what cost? Easy Hoon's on the mid lane. The rest of AHQ in the top lane. Easy Hoon can keep pushing here. Yes, Thresh behind him with the lantern. But AHQ, they just keep roaming around. They will never allow SK Telecom to just sit and farm. They want to keep forcing. I think there's a good chance for AHQ to take top lane tier two. And in that case, those two turrets for two turrets is absolutely worth it. Westor's already here to hold the mid lane. Nothing else done there. Bang might not even, no, he will finish his bot lane here. Don't like any, doesn't look like he's going to get stopped. Now he's going to make a try for it. Going to be able to defend it this time round. AHQ, two towers to one with a small gold lead and double the kills. Crucially, 2-1-2 two, two on and Siva. We'll see if that mobility helps AHQ get past that disengage of SKT. Yeah, you know it's been a good early game for AHQ when the AD carry gets the kills, because they always do this just to get and fed, and then in team fights they protect him so well, and it's really hard for SKT if you look at that composition in getting to that AD carry once QSS is completed for Ann. That's going to be the key one, otherwise the Urgot is just going to flash swap him, and you're just going to destroy him in the middle of your own team. He needs that QSS later on, and then suddenly SKT is going to be more about for them trying to kite backwards with Vizier Urgot, get a bit of damage, get some consistent damage, I guess we sure. can call it, and then try and always avoid the Cho'Gath one-shot. 
but honestly, SKT fighting back is absolutely fine. Like, it is. AHU has to go so hard to start any fights. Most of their engage requires their body. Yeah. So the fallback pattern, fine for SKT. And that's also why we see Righteous Glory coming in instantly for the Maokai. We have seen Catalyst into like Shroud and so on, where you delayed Righteous Glory because you want a bit more tanky stats. Here, it's about AHQ constantly forcing fights and getting onto this Z, getting onto the Urgot for SKT, because that's one of the things Cho'Gaf can do. It doesn't matter that Urgot stacks 250 armor. You're just going to one-shot him anyway with the true damage. It's about the shield from him. That's going to be the tricky one for, for Westor. Right, we'll see if Westor can figure out how to get past the trick. This is a guy who has really stepped up from game to game here at the Mid-Season Invitational. And, you know, he's arguably the most famous player of HQ, but he was not the hard carry in their regional playoffs. You know, Anne had a fantastic, fantastic performance. We'll get to that point in a second as Ziv and Marin are trading up here in the top lane. This might turn out to be a big fight. Marin might go Mega Nar. He's about to transform. And he's got reinforcements coming as well. Ziv could not possibly hope to get this kill, but there's two more of SKT coming up here. Easy who in the first end. Ziv playing aggressively without anyone nearby him at all. In comes the slow, in comes Bengi as well. Knocks him back into the wall to be safe. But of course, the lane. rest exactly of AHQ is ready to push on in. Mid lane outer turkey to take some damage. Bot lane tier two also getting hit. But if AHQ don't get an objective, they've given up a kill for nothing. We'll have to take a look at that middle lane as the rest of HQ have backed away and and target of at least one Acid Hunter forced to spell shield a second. Yeah, I feel like SK Telecom overcommitted a bit in that top lane. You could just send up Bengi. That should have been fine in a 2v1. Keep easy one in that mid lane because you really want to keep your outer turrets alive when you're against so much engage from AHQ. Once this map opens up and the tower starts dying, that's why you won't have anywhere to farm because they can always just pop civil ulti right to slurry and engage onto you, so you need to keep these outer turrets for as long as possible. Therefore, Ezeun cannot leave his lane. He has to sit there, constantly wave clear. And then, of course, Dragon in about a minute's time. First one went over to SKT because HQ tried to start it without clearing any wards. Well, let's take a step back. We're 15 minutes into the game. We're about as even as you can get when it comes to gold, kills, and towers. This is one of the closer games that we have seen Absolutely. throughout the last 15. And that bodes relatively well for AHQ. But at what point do, does SKT scaling start to overpower AHQ in this match? It'll be a long time, man. Looking for a pick here on DeWolf. Picks like this are always going to be a big deal. Forces a flash, but several will be down for Dragon. I don't know if AHQ could reliably 5v5 without that ultimate. Now that is a big one for them with the Sivir. Obviously not going to affect the damage a whole lot with the Righteous Glory, but it's also the fact that you're trying to get vision control. We've already seen a few pink walls being placed. They cleared the the ones before, but now they're giving up completely. Just by popping that ulti from Anne, everyone decides to back away. This suddenly opens up now for second Dragon to go over way too easy to SK Telecom because they're starting to place down their own wards. They're going to spot HQ if they try to walk in and start a fight. I want to see Ziv clear that wave top and join in mid. Good battle for the mid lane wave and take that for the Dragon. When you have a Z as well around these Dragons here and you this side to fight, you can sit around these choke points and always stop people from coming with your ulti. The two tanks trying to fight it out. What Ziff is trying to do is force Meganar for Marin, so like deal some damage to him, get him to pop the Meganar, and then suddenly HQ can start a fight with Mauka teleporting down and only a mini now coming. And look at the vision clear from HQ in the river. Anz on the hunt is getting closer and closer to being available. Two thirds of the cooldown has begun to be refreshed. AHQ push middle. Marin gets home guards now as well once he goes back. So he will try and join at least. There it is completed for him. He just doesn't have any rage at the moment. That's why AHQ is suddenly feeling confident once again. But AHQ sweeper is the last one. Oh, it barely misses the ward. So the ward control gonna be here for SKT. No pinks the inventory. We saw what happened last time AHQ, the dragon face of a ward, went badly. I'd like to see SKT honestly push up this mid lane here, put up the tower from their Zia if they can, and try and fight around that near the tier one that's already dead from AHQ. Because that, that's a good way to create a bit of a, a block from AHQ and just sit and start, try and poke them out. If you do manage to get a, some good poke down, then you start the dragon. It also mean that AHQ can just sit around the bottom side of the map because they have to respect the pressure you put in the mid lane. Well, we've been dancing around this dragon for an incredibly extended period of time. Neither team able to commit because of obviously Meganar as well as on the hunt. But AHQ now have better positioning, but they are fully, fully spotted by a ward, much like the previous dragon attempt at Mountain Star. And every single cooldown is up except for Wolf's Flash. AHQ managed to win. Actually, sorry, a and is missing his as well. So uh, one summoner missing on both sides. All these teams fighting with every possible uh, cooldown here. Essentially, Westor hasn't backed in a while, though. I think he's sitting on a lot of money, whereas Ezehoon is uh, a little bit more recently shopped. 
Item breakpoints like this can actually be a really huge deal. And Albus just went back to base. Meanwhile, West thought he was over near his own blue buff. SKT they knew he was gone from the mid lane, saw where he was moving, and they instantly start the dragon. This is one of the reasons purple side is so good for SK Telecom, because when you have these early dragons, you can play around when the enemy mid lane and try and go and take a blue buff, because that's obviously on the opposite side of the map, and that's exactly what they did right here. Let's see what happens mid, though. Well, Easy Hoon does pop the barrier relatively early, looking for some fights, gets a lot of soldiers auto attacks down, and we're still held on to both Feast and Ignite. Got the summoner spell, but it defended the tower. Yeah, I mean, he pulled turret aggro by attacking the poor guy, so that's kind of what happens when uh, you pull turret aggro in the face of a bunch of slows and the chance of some knockbacks and whatnot. So uh, AHQ actually managed to not get anything for the Dragon Take of SKT the second time really in a row. The AHQ hasn't managed to play the map quite. Bot lane outer turret's gone, and with SKT focusing the bot side of the map, tier two's not going down, and Izuku yeah. been a great devil holding on to mid outer for now. We just saw Mountain there stealing away that blue buff. Cheeky little play against Easy Hoon's Azir in the middle lane. Oh, when, ooh, that was close. Dredge line almost connecting, but this one will connect. Mo about to go Meganar looking to cut down the tree of Zip. It's going to land the crunch. Actually gets interrupted by the Twisted Advance. The tank battle. It's very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it's right back and forth. I'm like, where do I go with this? Where do I go with this? But yeah, 20 minutes on the clock, 800 gold in the lead. AHQ still two towers to one. We could be in for a longer period game. SKT still only two dragons towards that eventual aspect of the dragon and number five. Yeah, it's not going to be a quick one for them, that's for sure. They still have, of course, the clock ticking towards it. One of their ways they really like to play the game. Easy Hoon, he's going to be the poke master here for SK Telecom. Luden's Echo for him as a second item. So just trying to get as much poke damage as possible for himself. Obviously, his entire combo he's going to do, a death cap would have been better for overall damage, but if you can manage to single out one target with a few seconds in between, long range poke when you sit back and you kite back, that's where the loot in Zeko can shine, and it adds some extra wave play for him as well. Yeah. Honestly, SKT looking very good in this game. They're nursing this 1,000 gold deficit, and yet they've continually picked up the dragons in time. Top lane outer was dead. Marin like, would be available for getting ganked, but the ward coverage has never let AHQ pressure that lane. Right. I think we can say SKT has looked good in terms of dragon control, but when it comes to making plays on the map, AHQ has been very, very active. This mid tower, it's just a few hits from Ann and it's gone, and then suddenly the entire map is open yeah, but it's, made into the jungle. It's been a few hits from gone for the last six minutes. Successfully defended twice? Just keep in mind, if you look yeah. at the come from AHQ, while they want to force fights now, while they want to try and snowball the lead, every single DPS champion they have needs two items to be super, super effective. We also need level 11 on the Cho'Gath before you get enough damage on your feet to start one-shotting targets. Sivria is almost getting a Phantom Dancer, so it's not a bad thing that you wait for two item spikes on both Cho'Gath and Sivria before you really go hard on these fights. And it's also what they're trying to do here at HQ. Now they got this mid tower. And but the key flank from Nar coming in. Albus almost going down. He's even down to half, but out goes the rest of the team. Drag us into the fray as well. Swap in towards Amber. Interrupted Westor. Yes, but it's a silence. Bane is going to get shut down. Headshot comes through. There the kill picked up, Mountain forced to run, but he even summons the turret, the fight continuing for SKT, they want blood back. We do see the virtual Maelstrom jumping in for more kills, AHQ currently one for three, need to deal with the Azir passive and they will have the numbers to do so, a team fight victory after SKT started it. Now they turn their attention to Marin with a minion wave barreling down the middle lane and they set their sights on the inner turrets. We're gonna get mid lane tier two as well, so two turrets and plus two kills picked up, AHQ in a definitive lead in the mid game. We just talked about how AHQ, they wanted to wait for some items completed before they started forcing two items for West Store. And bang, he cannot swap himself into the Cho'Gath because he's going to get killed so easily. He put himself in such a bad situation. And SK Telecom's comp, they want to kite back. They don't want to hard engage onto AHQ. That's not the way you play against the Cho'Gath. He's just going to kill you. And that's exactly and what happened, yeah. TP flank came in, Ziv was there in time, slicing Maelstrom absorbed everything. And you mentioned Easy Hoon's build. Oh, it's poke-based. He wants to get damage down early on to the actual DPS of the fight. Not nearly as good. A bunch of early chunk on Albus, but he's not, like, it's not enough damage. You can see how Easy Hoon is trying to push him away and not push him further back. But now, with Bang also sitting in the middle, first of all, he's trying to swap, then gets interrupted. But he's still stuck now in the front. He's not tanky enough at all, and SK Telecom, their entire composition is now just breaking apart because suddenly they get stuck in the fight itself. Easy with the loot and Zeko, he needs more time to do proper poke damage, and he's so, so squishy with this build. 
Oh, we did see SKT while the replay was on, securing another tower. That's their third of the game. Find themselves 3,000 gold down, but it's AHQ with the definitive aggressive plays. Reminds you of home at all, Fisher? It's not really Danish music. Uh, okay. <laughs> I can't admit where you live now. Right, and on the hunt, looking for Marin. Albus does have the ability to throw the mine down. Dredge line out in a second, what? keeps Marin in place. Even the best players in the world will flash into the wall from time to time. That just seems silly in the first place. Like, that guy was going to get caught for sure, but SKT now starting to lose some kills around the map. And you mentioned Officio. Outer turrets going down, opens the map for AHQ to make all these plays. They've got two teleports. They've got a yeah. Righteous Glory and a Silver Ultimate. Open map is perfect for these guys. And suddenly, because again, you can start getting a few wards into the jungle, you can start things like Baron. No teleport for Marin. He's dead for another 15 seconds. AHQ are looking very good if they commit to this. Well, we'll see if they can. There's a lot of poke going down onto the AHQ members. Baron, 2,000 HP. SKT have stuck themselves around. AHQ now disengage, the Baron at disengage. One four and a half minutes. They've engaged. They go They're in. Bound. Okay, Ooh. okay, and Ed okay. He's taking him down. Now it's they're risking. Back. We did see the knockup on Easy Hoon, but Westall goes down. The rest of HQ in retreat. And it's still a chase in for SKT. Terracrasser just now picked up. That's a slow on to Ziv. They could probably chain him down. Summoner spells back. There's a knock on in. That's going to be two kills picked up for one, but Baron's still on the rest of AHQ. Yeah, they got the Baron, still worth it for them. They have to worry about these Dragons. Three coming in now for SK Telecom with this one. Very hard though, once you get that Baron to run away because we saw SKT were already in position. At least they tried after they went in first one. Like, oh, we don't really want to go in here. And I thought AHQ was making a beeline for it. Baron empowered recalls run across the map. Azir's still top lane. Thresh was dead, but it looks like no contest. SKT will get Dragon 3. That extra movement speed will help the rotations. This open map is going to be important for them. And very important for the disengaged style team fights they want to be playing. If SKT can ever find themselves in that scenario. Big CS advantage for Marin as well as Easy Hoon. That is somewhat equaled out by Ann's power. 5-1-4, and a very strong 30 CS advantage, all leading AHQ strong gold lead. And enough people are going to be here to defend mid lane tier two, but remember, this is now two minutes of Baron buff for AHQ, and the wave clear of SKT is basically just Easy Hoon. AHQ, I feel like, should be able to pick up one or maybe both of the remaining tier two turrets off the rest of this buff. Yeah, we need to see HQ make it a bit easier for themselves to start upgrading some of these trinkets here. You want to get those sweepers upgraded so you can really start denying vision from SKT and obviously Civ at this point. It's 250 gold, man, and it's one of the most gold efficient items in the entire game. Upgrade that totem here. Start playing around the vision where you take over the jungle completely from SK Telecom. Because when you run kite compositions, if you ever have to face check into someone, yeah. you will die instantly. You have to control the area when you fight. Yeah, kites need to be up in the air flying high if you're at ground level. Win doesn't seem to do very well for them. Ziv just now gets teleport back. AHQ is playing defensively for the last minute because they could get 5v4 and there's just enough engage that it'd be scary. But now it's up. Both global teleports for AHQ. The 1-3-1 for the next minute should still get some turret pressure. And let's just remind everyone, if AHQ beats SK Telecom, we will have a tiebreaker between SKT, AHQ, and EDG for first place. All the teams are already guaranteed being in the playoffs together with Fnatic, who obviously won before. Go Europe. <laughs> Let's see how this match plays out. AHQ still in the lead, but have been unable to crack those inner turrets that we were expecting they would do. Baron Buff has worn off, and Ziv a sidestep the chimney that Marin's throwing his way. SKT able to defend. Dude, Ziv is so impressive to me, though. This is the fourth in a row time I've seen him twisted advance under the Mal or the uh, the Nard W smash. He just never takes that skill shot. It's honestly very impressive to see Ziv play. So, if you look at the entire map here for, for AHQ and what they want to do, they're currently trying to push three lanes at once. That is so, so hard to pull off, especially when you don't really have a whole lot of spec pushers. I mean, Malkov Teleport is the guy sitting in side lane, and then you send your Ziv around. Focus on two lanes at once. In this case here, control the bottom side of the map because you want to be ready for Dragon when it spawns again to stop this potential fifth Dragon from SK Telecom. And then just push in mid and bottom lane. Whenever it hits the tower, if you see four members from SK Telecom, well, then you rotate through the jungle into the another lane and you take the mini wave there and you just slowly push it up one 
lane at a time, and then you always try and get a few hits on the tower, or you punish SKT if they ever try and go out and fight you. Oh, oh huge risk for Mountain. So much trouble. And Martin's in the same dire straits right here. Silence comes in, can't turn in a big knot. That's the kill picked up, but of course, Rek'Sai dies the same moment, but an ulti on the Bang. He is alone right now. A big bounce house for AHQ, and Bang will indeed go down. A two for one with the turret ready to die. AHQ should be able to take this one out as Wolf is unable oh! to do it. jumps onto Bangy. He does get it with the Feral Scream, then turns his attention to Wolf. That's four members of SK Telecom down. The number four team from the regular season of the LMS, sweeping their playoffs, showing up in their final game of the group stage yet MSI against the number one team from Korea. And I am having flashbacks to season two, guys. No one believed Taipei Assassin would be any good either. And season three, season four weren't so great for the region overall, but look at this. The LMS, the Taiwanese teams refuse to say die. And they're back in looking in super top form here. AHQ leading the charge to all the fans over there. Yeah, and definitely Deficient. We were talking about how a Cho'Gath would find the right targets. Whistle is finding the target. Yeah. And he's pretty happy that SK Telecom is taking the fights and walking into him. So he's just like, okay, who do I want to feast today? Is that an Urgot? Is that an Azir? We'll go for it. First of all, here, Mountain is trying to dual bang a little bit, ends up being caught out, but it's three versus one. So on the bottom side of the map, HQ know they can just keep fighting here. This tower is suddenly open for them, going for a dive onto Bang, and just trying to clean up. And in the very end, as well, for Westor, he finds the target on the Kragas. And everyone loves some German sausage. And as soon as Rapture goes in, AHQ all on the same page. Chunk them down, one and two more picked up. AHQ, the relentless aggression is working. And, you know, I said before, they've got to initiate with their bodies, but looks like AHQ were able to just fish for these engages with Rapture, and it works. Double Righteous Glory. Yep. Severe ulti. You cannot get any more speeds of maybe a talisman coming in as well. And then suddenly you have every way possible where you don't really want to sell your face at the mountain if you're not low, so I'm just... Saying if you sure. want more speed up, speed up. Have mountain build. Point on. is, there are so many ways for them to get onto SK Telecom, and as long as SK Telecom moves away from towers, it's gonna happen. Well, there is one caveat that we have to mention. Dragon in 45 seconds. SKT have secured the last three. You'd like to think, with all of those engaged tools, that AHQ will not give up another one. However, the Dragon Control this game has been lacking. We did see them stay around the bottom side though before. So they would keep the wards in the jungle here near this blue buff of SK Telecom. They had the time on everything, so they should be ready for this dragon to spawn. And the perfect thing for HQ is they can take it, and then they can swap all the focus on the top side near the Baron next time. Because also the tier two tower is alive on the top lane. And that's very easy right now to decide where do we go? Where's our next objective? Once we make sure we stop SK Telecom, Telecom from getting four dragons. Well, we'll see if SK Telecom even wants to give away that fourth dragon. They've done a great job keeping wards up, but here comes the engage. AHQ wants in. And he's going to try find Wolf. Wolf knocked up. We do see the boomerang blade going by, but AHQ now on the retreat. On the hunt, used as dragon has spawned. SKT smelling blood in the water. Can they find the fight? That will bring them back into this game. Now, Westo, a giant man there, and forced to retreat. That's a massive knockout from the rupture. And gets a godlike kill onto Bang as Marin is trying to zone him away. And he's got the face of the mountain shield, and he survives. In the back line is the re-engage, and SKT put up the wall. And the wall's gonna give him a lot of time to start chucking down these tanks. Mountain and Ziv trying to chase down Barrier in from Easy in the Lantern that he cannot quite reach. Down he goes as well. Two kills picked up, and that is gonna be a dragon secure for AHQ if they want it. AHQ are trying to do what Fnatic could not. They have got a strong lead, a strong gold advantage, but nobody saw to that dragon just yet. Oh, they're going to split the effort right here. I think very smart for AHQ. A bit of pressure in the mid lane. They're going to see who sticks there to defend it. And the other guy is going to go take down this dragon. Yeah. So number four is denied for now. SKT, that bomb's been defused. Now, AHQ needs to make sure they don't all recall at the same time and give Fnatic, or oh, SKT, sorry, <laughs> just a small chance of rushing a Baron. Because that's... Getting, we're getting to the point where SKT has to make some extremely risky moves to get back in the game because AHQ are still going to be stronger for a long time just by having this item advantage and the fact they can always engage on SK Telecom. Yeah, and something else that we have to step back and also touch on. AHQ had that phenomenal playoff run. They went 9 and 1, you know, fourth seed beating third, second, first. But one thing that stood out is across all those games, they only secured 45% of the Barons. And we'll finish that point in a moment as Mountain 
Skizmar and away. The point I want to highlight, they had a smart Baron play earlier, and we'll see if they're going to lose this one now. Well, it's going to be a smart Baron play by SK Telecom T1. They're saying, okay, our way back in is to rush down the Baron with the rest of your teams on the wrong side of the map. It's losing health rapidly. It is going to be picked up by SKT, and will there be an ensuing team fight? It will be most certainly free. We're still looking for target. Easy Hoon and Bengi caught in the pit. Emperor's Divide will keep them alive for a few moments longer, but it's Marin that's gone down and secures yet another kill. Bengi knocked up for 10 million years as it's a double kill for Ann Siver. SK2 get Baron, lose two, and now have to defend for 35 seconds. The resulting 5v3 should be enough time for AHK to take something very meaningful or maybe not. Looks like they are not willing to play this game risky at all. 30 second death timers, not enough to make AHQ push into the base. Uh, we did just talk about how SK Telecom had to make a risky play, and they did because suddenly three guys were on the bottom side chasing Marin on this NAR here. So AHQ with a few mistakes here, 34 minutes in, still been playing such a fantastic game overall. And I love the way they just challenge SK Telecom and say, you're not going to get to sit and just go get five dragons easily. We keep forcing fights. Analyst Desk was talking about how we need to see teleports from the top lane. We see Mountain being, being active on the map. And he was. This Rek'Sai had so many ganks in the early game. You can then discuss, OK, how many of them worked. But just the fact he applies so much pressure on the map is a big deal for AHQ. Ladies and gentlemen, at 35 minutes, AHQ have to fend off that Baron, but they are looking poised to give SKT their first loss in the group stage that would set us up for tie-breaker matches as there would be a three-way tie for first. But that all-important Nexus has to fall, and it's taken AHQ an incredible amount of time just to break the inner ring of turrets from SKT. How yeah. much longer will it take to get all the way to the next? Well, this is where Easy Hoon and his build become super annoying because he has that <laughs> extra wave clear and he just yeah. sits there and he just constantly kills them. But the HQ, done now. HQ are tanky enough and has enough single target lockdown in terms of like Maokai and Nautilus and then maybe a feast from a choker to just dive on SK Telecom. If they ever see a chance where Marin is stuck in one of the side lanes, you can just dive, bang, Easy Hoon. Blow them up instantly, and that's a way for me to open it up. Otherwise, if you just sit and let them wave clear, SKT can keep buying time. But SKT buying time isn't maybe the worst thing in the world for AHQ because there's still a Baron buff taking on three of these guys. Yeah, One of them being sure. Easy Hoon, who's pretty threatening. AHQ actually being pushed out of the base. Ooh, good dodge with the hook. SKT still really want this fight right now. It looks like they want to engage. Look at the teleports on the back line. Zip, can he fight a priority target? Bang's already been knocked up, and Wolf is the first one that's gone low. Who will be the first victim of the fight as Bengi is trying to zone away and doing a good job. Easy Hoon! Got easy Hoon's help. They've traded one for one, but it's top laner versus AD carry. Bang, landing Acid Hunters onto Zip. As it looks like HQ are peeling away, the one-for-one -one trade stops the aggression. And there's no persistent damage left by AHQ. It's a miracle they got the kill that they did. SKT playing that fight really well, isolating and taking down the only real carry force for team fights, that 10 and 1 Sivir. SKT unable to get any more cleanup, though. Yeah, we just saw and coming from the middle, and that's why SK Telecom wanted to fight, because AH could split up. There were three guys top, and was sitting mid lane, and then bottom lane, of course, Marco, Marco with the TP. So once he joined the fight, he was a flanking AD carry, which obviously does not work too well. Also, why they could target him and single him out. As long as AHQ have that AD carry with the, with the tanks, it shouldn't be that easy, because QSS, as we talked about a lot earlier in this game, is completed, so Bang won't be able to swap into him and like just zone him out. Well, as we go on to the next few minutes of this game, it's 1.30 on Dragon, and SKT in a 4-on-4, four four, now a 5-on-5 five five as the players respawn. My question is, who gets the ward control? SKT, for being 10,000 gold down, have done an incredible job of finding ways to get Vision back down to the map and not rolling over. Many lesser teams would have already lost the game by now. You can watch that team fight again. Yeah, so basically, look at the minimap. You can see how Sira is running from the mid lane, so once and joins the fight, SK Tele Telecom can basically target him instantly, and there's no tanks to really protect him. So Easy also sees a way where he can finally jump in aggressive and just curving his soldier around. He's flying in the air, then he moves the soldier closer and gets onto him. As long as An stays with the tanks, Easy won't be able to make that play because there's no hourglass. He's not even building it. 
So he will go down very, very fast if he jumps in the middle of Matt HQ. Massive engage here in the mid lane, cost Mountain and West all their flashes, and Marin forced to hop away. He's gonna crunch out against the wall. Reducing Ant, use that QSS in retreat. Marin may be the first victim, but he... Oh! The crit's not enough to get the kill. A dredge line does pull Bang back into the fight, and with and no QSS, in. and we'll swap. We'll need to take a look at the main fight, as Ziv is pulling the aggro of the entire SKT team. Mountain's low, but not dead yet. Wolf with another lantern, saving himself this time. It's two kills to SKT, as SKT are not dead. They got Mountain, they got Anne, and they're gonna get away. Oh! Wow. That's a gigantic rupture. If you saw how low the health bars got of SKT playing that fight nearly perfectly, it's still only a plus one fight, though, and AHQ have the health bars to just take Dragon. They do indeed. Once again, AHQ being caught out a little bit. They're never really staying together as a team. The first stun from Marin onto Anne popped the QSS, so then Bank will suddenly swap in and take him down. And also, can we just enjoy Easy Hoon in these fights oh, on man. this Azir? The way he stays in the back, he kites backwards on his own, and he deals so much damage. Ryla is completely just to add some more CC. This does mean, again, there's no Hourglass. If he gets locked down by Westor, then he dies instantly, and SKT lose the fight. And it looks like just the four on three is enough for SKT to go and pick up Dragon number four, AHQ. Again, taking the more conservative approach every time, health bars or not, AHQ playing a much slower game and starting to bite them as SKT getting the way back in on this. It's been a 10,000 gold lead for around 10 minutes in this game, and AHQ's controlled style, despite all of the engage, despite all of the tools to start fights, have not started all that many. And it's given SKT time to farm themselves back in. But keep in mind, they are still low. We are going to see the hype of the kinetic position reverser. Wow. What's going on, guys? I don't know. What's going on here? AHQ, after doing so well where they ran around as a team and forced fights on SK Telecom, the last five minutes have just constantly been split up and therefore being caught up by SK Telecom. We don't get to see them just played fairly slow, take control of one jungle at a time where you run in as a unit. And you can always engage on SK Telecom as long as you stay together. You get up that vision control and you deny these picks from happening. Instead, now Westor. Westor gets knocked in. Bangy chopped down a half HP, but Bang's here to put in some damage. Easy who joins the fray as well. This is a 5v4. Morn gets caught up with the mid laner. Drops as well. That's Westor dead. And the fight oh. continues. And down to half. Easy who crushing absolutely everybody. Bang gets the kill credit. Knocks more back in. An absolute slaughter in favor of SKT. And it's an ace. AHQ are down after 40 minutes of hope. SKT look to gain control of the match. They're on the inhibitor turrets and they're looking for more. Step aside, Fager. He's you and he's in town. And he's playing so, so well on this Azir. They can finish the game. They're still 4K behind. SK Telecom punishing AHQ for bad positioning on the map for the last five minutes. And they're the number one seed now. What a, an incredible turnaround. SK Telecom take AHQ down from a 10,000 gold deficit. Undefeated in the group stages at MSI. And SKT sure know how to put on a show. I mean, the same thing happened up against Fnatic. A great early game aggressive team could certainly give the Koreans a few knocks. But strategic play, yeah. the fortitude, the mental and physical fortitude to stick in these games and play them right was absolutely here. SKT making a massive comeback in this one. We definitely see the way to play against SK Telecom in the early game. We've seen both Fnatic and now AHQ, AHQ do it. Two teams who have somewhat the same play style. And while AHQ didn't manage to finish out the game, much like Fnatic, we just have to praise them anyway for saying such a well-played early to mid game from the deck. Again, they're coming in from the LMS region. They have shown they are a legit top team in international competition. What a heartbreaking turn of events. AHQ on the verge of challenging for first slips away. Now, let's be fair, they are still in the playoffs. They're still in the bracket. Yeah. And considering the, the increase in level over the course of games, this has to be one of the contenders to maybe pick up a victory. They are showing such great levels. You know, it's just AHQ doing the same storyline from the LMS playoffs. You know, they lost for the most part to the teams that they played in the playoffs during the regular season. All right, we'll lose to you guys in the group stages. AHQ gonna make the comeback story happen in the playoffs here. Maybe that's in their minds. Certainly some things to improve though in the late game. Well, we'll have to find out if they can. That wraps it up here for us on the Caster Booth. We're gonna throw it over to the analyst desk to close out the day.